Let's, let's not be rough on these guys. Ba Mayor Knight got in at 1 o'clock last night after a long meeting. So anyway, I, I, let's start with um, Mayor Knight, if you'll want to first start, and then uh, we'll go from there. Actually, our meeting was short. We got through at midnight last night. <laughs> we have some notoriety for long meetings. Uh, thank you for being here, for, for allowing us to be here. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, I spent, uh, I was a CPA, and I spent a good part of my working career working in, uh, in connection with real estate uh, development, uh, management, uh, the whole, whole range of things. So, so I'm just happy to be among you. Um, I'll just briefly tell you two or three things, just, just ten minutes maybe, uh, about what's going on in Greensboro and, and a few thoughts. Uh, you mentioned hot buttons. Yeah, we have a couple hot buttons. And right now, the, um, I guess the, the, our landfill uh, is, is probably a, a big hot button. And, um, uh, and I, without going into it, enough been said, but uh, we're moving toward uh, a contract uh, with um, a basically privatization and um, and doing this over <clears throat> next 15 years would bring a return anywhere from 110 to 125 million dollars back in city coffers and you know it's like most everybody unless y'all are different from us we're having some stresses on our budget right now so this is one thing the uh, legislatively um, something has been of interest and probably uh, to uh, those in the, especially in the development business, something called the Jordan Lake Rules. And uh, these were, uh, they came about uh, several years ago in uh, Greensboro uh, for, from the time, I guess, 2008 when those rules were implemented, um, went on record with the, their legislative delegation asking that they be repealed. And um, we've done that. And again, this year, um, we seem to be making a little ground uh, rather than asking for repeal. We are asking that um, that the that there be a delay in the implementation of the wastewater treatment and uh, the um, the uh, existing development and uh, new development rules uh, to move them back four years because these rules were written in a pretty vibrant economy and you know we don't you know we kind of know where we are right now but the first part of it for Greensboro that we would have to um, began to confront would be by, by 2016 would have a price tag of around 70 million dollars and uh, so uh, 2020 2021 gives us some breathing room to to address that and hopefully the, see the economy return <clears throat> as i mentioned uh, we uh last night our manager has uh, presented us with with our budget his budget recommendations and um just in, in um, short form fashion, we are um, trying to be, ensure that we don't run into any economic um, um, shortcomings on our budget. Uh, we are looking at probably in the range of 16, 17 million dollars in budget cuts, which would include uh, curtailing some bond issuances. We were scheduled to issue 35 million in the coming year, and that, that number may drop down to 30. But uh, we will have uh, our budget deliberations and our um, uh, public hearing, and then, of course, by June 30, we must have a uh, budget submitted and uh, a balanced budget. So that's moving forward. Um, <clears throat> something with my fellow mayors here that I think is very interesting uh, or very important is that uh, we've been uh, we've really been pursuing cooperation, not only in the triad but within the region. Uh, We've heard the story told uh, uh, several times that, uh, and we know that over 10 years, the region lost about 90,000 jobs, and, and we know know what that means. Um, that they're all not coming, but they're coming back slowly. And there's there's some effort to um, uh, build around several clusters: the uh, what we call the Aerotropolis, the uh, transportation, the logistics um, leg, kind of out in the airport region, uh, if you will, the new interstate highway system coming through, or systems that are being built, uh, home furnishings, and uh, Becky may want to speak to that, and of course the nanotech. Some really exciting things, but they're coming coming rather slowly. And a, a theory is evolving, uh, well I shouldn't say a theory, but a thought is something called a game changer. And David Powell from Piedmont Triad Partnership is saying we need to think about 
an auto assembly plant, thinking those scales, something that would perhaps entail thousands of jobs. You know, Winston-Salem is very fortunate, did a good job with, with Caterpillar. And um, to begin to hit, really hit some, try to hit some, get some big hits. And the thing that we need and what we're hearing is infrastructure. And, you know, maybe we can talk some among ourselves and see what can we do to work together. I think working together we can do much, much more than than going our own separate ways. So uh, we want to pursue that. Um, and uh, one of the complaints I hear about the region is we don't get the word out. We've got a lot going for us here. We've got a great deal. You know, we talked about the airport, the university systems, uh, the um, things that are going on, the positive things. But when you go, when you go to Chicago or Milwaukee or wherever, they they're not aware of this. So we, you know, there needs to be a greater effort to to uh, to get the word out of it. And I think we've got to get the wheels of the economy going. And what can we do? We can help on this uh, working in collaboration with one another. I know we have our local issues we'll continue to deal with, but uh, we've got uh, we've got to keep the young people in this area. That schools are turning them out. We need to be able to do the things that will make them want to stay here. And uh, so um, this is it in a long and short. Uh, there are other things I could talk about. Some of them are legislative, but uh, um, I'll leave my comments of that if you wish to have questions. But uh, again, I thank you very much. And uh, I'll go. Thank you very much.